The Telex network was a public switched network of teleprinters similar to a telephone network, for the purposes of sending text-based messages. Telex was a major method of sending written messages electronically between businesses in the post-World War II period. Its usage went into decline as the fax machine grew in popularity in the 1980s. The Telex term refers to the network, not the teleprinters. Point to point teleprinter systems had been in use long before telex exchanges were built in the 1930s. Teleprinters evolved from telegraph systems, and, like the telegraph, they used binary signals, which means that symbols were represented by the presence or absence of a pre defined level of electric current. This is significantly different from the analog telephone system, which used varying voltages to represent sound. For this reason, telex exchanges were entirely separate from the telephone system, with their own signaling standards, exchanges and system of telex numbers, the counterpart of telephone numbers. Telex provided the first common medium for international record communications using standard signaling techniques and operating criteria as specified by the International Telecommunication Union. Customers on any Telex exchange could deliver messages to any other, around the world. To lower line usage, Telex messages were normally first encoded onto paper tape and then read into the line as quickly as possible. The system normally delivered information at 50 bu or approximately 66 words per minute, encoded using the International Telegraph Alphabet No. 2. In the last days of the telex networks, end-user equipment was often replaced by modems and phone lines, reducing the telex network to what was effectively a directory service running on the phone network. Topic. Development Telex began in Germany as a research and development program in 1926 that became an operational teleprinter service in 1933. The service, operated by the Reichspost Reich Postal Service, had a speed of 50 bu, approximately 66 words per minute. Telex service spread within Europe and particularly after 1945 around the world. By 1978, West Germany, including West Berlin, had 123,298 Telex connections. Long before automatic telephony became available, most countries, even in Central Africa and Asia, had at least a few high-frequency shortwave Telex links. Often, government postal and telegraph services PTTs initiated these radio links. The most common radio standard, CCITTR.44 had error corrected retransmitting time division multiplexing of radio channels. Most impoverished PTTs operated their telex on radio tour channels non-stop, to get the maximum value from them. The cost of tour equipment has continued to fall. Although the system initially required specialized equipment, as of 2016 many amateur radio operators operate TOR also known as RTTY with special software and inexpensive hardware to connect computer sound cards to short wave radios. Modern cablegrams or telegrams actually operate over dedicated telex networks, using TOR whenever required. Telex served as the forerunner of modern fax, email, and text messaging. Both technically and stylistically. Abbreviated English like CUL8R for See You Later as used in texting originated with telex operators exchanging informal messages in real time. They became the first texters long before the introduction of mobile phones. Telex users could send the same message to several places around the world at the same time, like email today, using the Western Union Infomaster computer. 
This involved transmitting the message via paper tape to the Infomaster computer dial code 6111 and specifying the destination addresses for the single text. In this way, a single message could be sent to multiple distant telex and TWX machines as well as delivering the same message to non-telex and non-TWX subscribers via Western Union Mailgram. Topic. Operation and applications Telex messages are routed by addressing them to a telex address, e.g., 14910 Eric S., where 14910 is the subscriber number, Eric is an abbreviation for the subscriber's name in this case Telefonaktibolage LM. Ericsson in Sweden and S as the country code. Solutions also exist for the automatic routing of messages to different telex terminals within a subscriber organization, by using different terminal identities, e.g. plus T148. A major advantage of telex is that the receipt of the message by the recipient could be confirmed with a high degree of certainty by the answerback. At the beginning of the message, the sender would transmit a WRU who are you code, and the recipient machine would automatically initiate a response which was usually encoded in a rotating drum with pegs, much like a music box. The position of the pegs sent an unambiguous identifying code to the sender, so the sender could verify connection to the correct recipient. The WRU code would also be sent at the end of the message, so a correct response would confirm that the connection had remained unbroken during the message transmission. This gave Telex a major advantage over Group 2 fax, which had no inherent error checking capability. The usual method of operation was that the message would be prepared offline, using paper tape. All common telex machines incorporated a five-hole paper tape punch and reader. Once the paper tape had been prepared, the message could be transmitted in minimum time. Telex billing was always by connected duration, so minimizing the connected time saved money. However, it was also possible to connect in real time where the sender and the recipient could both type on the keyboard and these characters would be immediately printed on the distant machine. Telex could also be used as a rudimentary but functional carrier of information from one IT system to another, in effect a primitive forerunner of electronic data interchange. The sending IT system would create an output e.g., an inventory list on paper tape using a mutually agreed format. The tape would be sent by telex and collected on a corresponding paper tape by the receiver and this tape could then be read into the receiving IT system. One use of telex circuits, in use until the wide-scale adoption of BI.400 and Internet email, was to facilitate a message handling system, allowing local email systems to exchange messages with other email and telex systems via a central routing operation, or switch. One of the largest such switches was operated by Royal Dutch Shell as recently as 1994, permitting the exchange of messages between a number of IBM OfficeVision, Digital Equipment Corporation All-in-One and Microsoft Mail Systems. In addition to permitting email to be sent to telex, formal coding conventions adopted in the composition of telex messages enabled automatic routing of telexes to email recipients. Topic. United States Topic Teletypewriter Exchange Service TWX. The Teletypewriter Exchange Service TWX was developed by the AT&T Corporation in the United States. It originally transmitted at 45.45 BU or approximately 60 words per minute, using five-level Bado code. AT&T began TWX on November 21, 1931. 
AT&T later developed a second generation of TWX called 4-row that used the 110 BU, using 8-level ASCII code. TWX was offered in both 3-row and 4-row ASCII versions up to the late 1970s. TWX used the public switched telephone network. In addition to having separate area codes 510, 610, 710, 810 and 910 for the TWX service, the TWX lines were also set up with a special class of service to prevent connections from POTS to TWX and vice versa. The code – speed conversion between 3-row and 4-row ASCII TWX service was accomplished using a special Bell 10A – B board via a live operator. A TWX customer would place a call to the 10A – B board operator for BADO, ASCII calls, ASCII, BADO calls and also TWX conference calls. The code – speed conversion was done by a Western Electric unit that provided this capability. There were multiple code – speed conversion units at each operator position. AT&T published the trade magazine TWX, related to the teletypewriter exchange service from 1944 to 1952. It published articles that touched upon many aspects of the technology. Western Union purchased the TWX system from AT&T in January 1969. The TWX system and the special U.S. area codes 510, 710, 810 and 910 continued until 1981, when Western Union completed the conversion to the Western Union Telex 2 system. Any remaining three-row Bado customers were converted to Western Union Telex service during the period 1979 to 1981. Bell Canada retained area code 610 until 1992. Its remaining numbers were moved to non-geographic area code 600. The modem for this service was the Bell 101 dataset, which is the direct ancestor of the Bell 103 modem that launched computer time sharing. The 101 was revolutionary because it ran on ordinary unconditioned telephone subscriber lines, allowing the Bell system to run TWX along with POTS on a single public switched telephone network. Telex2 was the name for the TWX network after it was acquired from AT&T by Western Union. It was re-acquired by AT&T in 1990 in the purchase of the Western Union assets that became AT&T EasyLink Services. Topic Western Union In 1958, Western Union started to build a Telex network in the United States. This telex network started as a satellite exchange located in New York City and expanded to a nationwide network. Western Union chose Siemens and Halski AG, now Siemens AG, and ITT to supply the exchange equipment, provisioned the exchange trunks via the Western Union National Microwave System and leased the exchange to customer site facilities from the local telephone company. Teleprinter equipment was originally provided by Siemens and Halski AG and later by Teletype Corporation. Initial direct international telex service was offered by Western Union, via WU. International, in the summer of 1960 with limited service to London and Paris. In 1962, the major exchanges were located in New York City 1, Chicago 2, San Francisco 3, Kansas City 4, and Atlanta 5. The Telex network expanded by adding the final parent exchanges cities of Los Angeles 6, Dallas 7, Philadelphia 8, and Boston 9, starting in 1966. The Telex numbering plan, usually a six-digit number in the United States, was based on the major exchange where the customer's Telex machine terminated. For example, all Telex customers that terminated in the New York City exchange were assigned a Telex number that started with a first digit 1. 
Further, all Chicago based customers had telex numbers that started with a first digit of 2. This numbering plan was maintained by Western Union as the telex exchanges proliferated to smaller cities in the United States. The Western Union Telex Network was built on three levels of exchanges. The highest level was made up of the nine exchange cities previously mentioned. Each of these cities had the dual capability of terminating Telex customer lines and setting up trunk connections to multiple distant Telex exchanges. The second level of exchanges, located in large cities such as Buffalo, Cleveland, Miami, Newark, Pittsburgh and Seattle, were similar to the highest level of exchanges in capability of terminating Telex customer lines and setting up trunk connections. However, these second-level exchanges had a smaller customer line capacity and only had trunk circuits connected to regional cities. The third level of exchanges, located in small to medium-sized cities, could terminate telex customer lines and had a single trunk group running to its parent exchange. Loop signaling was offered in two different configurations for Western Union Telex in the United States. The first option, sometimes called local or loop service, provided a 60 mA loop circuit from the exchange to the customer teleprinter. The second option, sometimes called long distance or polar was used when a 60 mA connection could not be achieved, provided a ground return polar circuit using 35 mA on separate send and receive wires. By the 1970s, under pressure from the Bell operating companies wanting to modernize their cable plant and lower the adjacent circuit noise that these telex circuits sometimes caused, Western Union migrated customers to a third option called F1-F2. This F1-F2 option replaced the DC voltage of the local and long-distance options with modems at the exchange and subscriber ends of the telex circuit. Western Union offered connections from Telex to the AT&T Teletypewriter Exchange TWX system in May 1966 via its New York Information Services Computer Center. These connections were limited to those TWX machines that were equipped with automatic answerback capability per CCITT standard. USA-based telex users could send the same message to several places around the world at the same time, like email today, using the Western Union InfoMaster computer. This involved transmitting the message via paper tape to the InfoMaster computer dial code 6111 and specifying the destination addresses for the single text. In this way, a single message could be sent to multiple distant telex and TWX machines as well as delivering the same message to non-telex and non-TWX subscribers via Western Union Mailgram. <laughs> <laughs> International record carriers International record carrier IRC was a term created by the Federal Communications Commission FCC in the United States. Bell's original consent agreement limited it to international dial telephony, and the Western Union Telegraph Company had given up its international telegraphic operation in a 1939 bid to monopolize U.S. telegraphy by taking over ITT's postal, telegraph and telephone service PTT business. The result was a de-emphasis on telex in the U.S. and the creation of several international telex and telegraphy companies, collectively called IRCs. Western Union Telegraph Company developed a subsidiary named Western Union Cable System. This company was later renamed as Western Union International WUI when it was spun off by Western Union as an independent company. WUI was purchased by MCI Communications in 1983 and operated as a subsidiary of MCI International. ITT's World Communications 
Division, later known as ITT World Communications, was amalgamated from many smaller companies: Federal Telegraph, All American Cables and Radio, Globe Wireless, and the common carrier division of McKay Marine. ITT World Communications was purchased by Western Union in 1987. RCA Communications, later known as RCA Global Communications, had specialized in global radio telegraphic connections. In 1986, it was purchased by MCI International. Before World War I, the Tropical Radio Telegraph Company, later known as Tropical Radio Telecommunications or TRT, put radio telegraphs on ships for its owner, the United Fruit Company (UFC), to enable them to deliver bananas to the best-paying markets. Communications expanded to UFC's plantations and were eventually provided to local governments. TRT eventually became the national carrier for many small Central American nations. The French Telegraph Cable Company later known as FTC Communications, or just FTCC, which was founded in 1871, was owned by French investors and headquartered in the United States. It laid transatlantic cable between the two countries. International telegrams routed via FTCC used routing ID PQ, the initials of the company's founder, Augustin Puyer Quartier (1820–1891). Firestone Rubber developed its own IRC, the Trans Liberia Radio Telegraph Company, which operated shortwave from Akron, Ohio, to the rubber plantations in Liberia. Bell Telex users had to select which IRC to use, and then append the necessary routing digits. The IRCs converted between TWX and Western Union Telegraph Co. standards. <laughs> United Kingdom Telex began in the UK as an evolution from the 1930s Telex Printergram service, appearing in 1932 on a limited basis. This used the telephone network in conjunction with a teleprinter 7B and signaling equipment to send a message to another subscriber with a teleprinter, or to the central telegraph office. In 1945 as the traffic increased it was decided to have a separate network for telex traffic and the first manual exchange opened in London. By 1954, the public inland telex service opened via manually switched exchanges. A number of subscribers were served via automatic sub-centers which used relays and Type 2 uniselectors, acting as concentrators for a manual exchange. In the late 1950s the decision was made to convert to automatic switching and this was completed by 1961. There were 21 exchanges spread across the country, with one international exchange in London. The equipment used the Strouger system for switching, as was the case for the telephone network. Conversion to Stored Program Control SPC began in 1984 using exchanges made by Canadian Marconi, with the last Strouger exchange closing in 1992. User numbers increased over the following years into the 1990s. The dominant supplier of the Telex machines was Creed, a division of ITT. A separate service, Secure Stream 300 previously circuit-switched data network was a variant of telex running at 300 BU, used for telemetry and monitoring purposes by utility companies and banks, among others. This was a high-security virtual private wire system with a high degree of resilience through diversely routed dual-path network configurations. British Telecom stopped offering the Telex service to new customers in 2004 and discontinued the service in 2008, allowing users to transfer to Swiss Telex if they wished to continue to use Telex. Topic: <laughs> Canada 
Canada-wide automatic teleprinter exchange service was introduced by the CPR Telegraph Company and CN Telegraph in July 1957 the two companies, operated by rivals Canadian National Railway and Canadian Pacific Railway, would join to form CNCP Telecommunications in 1967. This service supplemented the existing international telex service that was put in place in November 1956. Canadian telex customers could connect with 19 European countries in addition to 18 Latin American, African, and Trans-Pacific countries. The major exchanges were located in Montreal 01, Toronto 02, and Winnipeg 03. Topic. Decline Telex is still in operation but not in the sense described in the CCITT Blue Book documentation. iTelegram offers Telex without subscriber Telex lines. Individual subscribers can use DeskMail, a legacy Windows program that connects to the iTelegram Telex network, but this is via IP as the last mile. Telex has been mostly superseded by fax, email, and Swift, although Radiotelex, Telex via HF radio, is still used in the maritime industry and is a required element of the global maritime distress and safety system. See worldwide use of telegrams by country for current status in different countries. <laughs> See also